G'day folks and welcome. Today I just wanted to share a couple of terminal tricks, five in fact, that I have found have really helped me feel like I've leveled up as a developer. Now you might find these particularly useful if you're just starting your coding journey. You might find them helpful if you're in a more junior position and you're looking to level up. Or you might also find them helpful if you're a senior and I've just said something you haven't heard of before. All the same, if you find something helpful, please let me know below. And if there's anything you think I've missed that you particularly like as a terminal trick, I'd love to hear about it too. Now our first terminal trick is one that I use on a very regular basis, particularly when I'm in a Unix based system. Uh, if you've ever been in a situation where you've accidentally forgotten to sudo, uh, so for example if we do say apt update, um, we see here that it says it cannot do it because uh, it does not have the correct permissions and of course what I was supposed to do was sudo apt update. Now that's all very well and good, but it gets very annoying to have to type sudo every time you forget. So one thing you can do if you've um, forgotten, uh, you do your accidental forgetting of uh, the correct sudo, uh, and then instead of typing out the whole thing again, you can just write sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark, or as I like to call it, sudo bang bang. And sudo bang bang will repeat the previous uh, terminal instruction uh, with sudo in front of it and then you can just press enter and it will work as you were expecting. So sudo bang bang for the times when you have forgotten to sudo the previous command. Okay, so our next example is a lovely little git utility called tig, which is just git spelled backwards. Now if you've ever tried getting a git log, uh, you'll notice it can be a little bit verbose sometimes. Um, or similarly, if you wanna do git status, um, you can see lots of files that have been modified or untracked or whatever, um, but it's not particularly interactive. One thing that TIG allows us to do is to firstly see a git log that we can um, move through with the J and the K keys. So J moves us down and K moves us back up. Uh, and then when we press enter on it, we can see inside that actual commit. Uh, so we can see here that we added the line, here is some dummy text and we can just press Q to get out of both of those. And then the thing we can do with TIG status, um, similar to git status, we can see our list of tracked files and untracked files and the changes that have been committed. Um, but we can also um, add them directly from here. So instead of doing something like git add keepme.js, uh, we can simply go to keepme.js and press U and then it gets added to our changes to be committed. And it makes it very easy to just pick the other one that we want. And then these files that we don't want to keep, it's very easy to just leave those be. Uh, and then also, of course, the nice thing we can do with um, TIG status as well, when we press enter, we can see the new thing that's been added. So we removed the dummy text and we've added a groovy function. So then from there, we can just do our git commit as usual. and we are good to go. So now if we check git status, we can still see what we've got there. And if we were to do, um, say, just a regular tick, we can get our log and we can see our git history um, to see what kinds of changes have been made as we go. It's an excellent git utility, a little bit um, nicer to use um, on a day-to-day -day basis, doesn't take as long to boot up as an actual um, graphical user interface for git, but it's a very, very straightforward, easy to use tool and I use it continually, every day, it's a wonderful tool. Now the third trick I like to use, uh, if you remember when we did our uh, sudo apt update earlier, uh, sometimes we have these long running commands and apt update is not that bad when you've just done one, but if you've not done one for a while and you're updating your system, uh, you might want some sort of notification when it's done or any long running terminal process, you might want a notification for when it's done. So what you can do is use the, uh, on the Ubuntu at least, you can use the SPD say command. Uh, so just to show you what SPD say does, done. <clears throat> SPD say will say done for us. Um, but then if we were to do something like um, sudo apt update and then we use a semicolon to um, put the next command on there. And then we can uh, say spd say done. Uh, it will run both commands for us. Done. And you see there it tells us done as soon as it's finished its command. A very helpful thing when you've got a long running terminal process. 
Now the next tool I want to show you is one you're probably familiar with or have at least heard of, but if you haven't, it is grep. And what we use grep for is for searching through a very large text file usually um, in order to find a particular pattern that we are looking for in it. So typically speaking, if we were going to look for particularly long um, log, so here we have a nice long uh, log file which isn't particularly interesting but we're just using it as an example. We can see this is a very long log file and uh, not particularly uh, readable for us but if we know there's a particular term we want to look for within it we can use, we can look for that um, term using grep. So for example if we were to say grep failed within this log um, it will just print the lines where the word failed also showed up. And you can get fancy with grep and use different patterns but um, usually just a plain text pattern is perfectly fine for if you're looking for errors or particular events in a log file or some other long file that you need to grep through. And finally, an excellent tool we can use, particularly if you are forgetful like me, is the history command. Now what the history command will do is show you every single um, command you have typed into your terminal. Now that might sound like it's not particularly useful, but imagine the scenario where you remember that you have done a particular trick at some point in the past, but you can't remember the exact syntax for it. History becomes particularly powerful when we pair it with grep. So for example, let's just say we want to look in our history, but we also want to grep for the term uh, chmod or schmod, because we want to change um, the permissions for a particular file, but we can't remember how we've done that in the past and we're too lazy to Google it because we know we've done it before. So we can do history and then we can use the little pipe character and then we can um, pipe the history output to grep and then grep will limit it to only the commands that have used um, schmod. So here we can see um, some times when I've had to change uh, the file permissions or whatever on this particular machine and you can see um, history has just uh, made that very easy for us to see how we used to do it. So those are my five favorite terminal tricks. There are obviously way more that I could have picked and in fact I probably will do a few more sometime in the near future. But if there are any that you particularly love, uh, either from this video, let me know below, or any that you love that I didn't mention, then please again leave a comment and I'd love to know what tricks you use to feel more productive as a developer. Thanks for watching.